historical linguistics, historical comparative linguistics to be exact. What does that have to do with you? Well, if you're learning Spanish or French or Italian or any Romance language, I would like to say everything. You see, by comparing Romance languages to each other and comparing them with the Latin that we know, we can actually discern a lot about the nature and the structure of the Romance languages. And that provides us with a whole set of very useful shortcuts for understanding the grammar of any Romance language as spoken today. And this kind of makes sense. After all, the Romance languages are really just Latin today, produced by a variety of different circumstances that determine and have made them different one from the other. A lot of these shortcuts are useful even if you're not learning multiple Romance languages at the same time. If you're just focused on getting great at Spanish, understanding the history and the structure of Spanish can help you a lot in internalizing a lot of the grammatical rules. That's what today's video is going to be about. What I want to discuss today particularly is one feature, one phenomenon that's shared across all of the Romance languages, at least that I know of, and we can be pretty certain emerges towards the beginning of the Middle Ages. And that's this formation of the future tense and the conditional tense in these languages. To start off, we need to begin with Latin. Now, Latin, verbs that weren't conjugated were kept in their infinitive form. Latin also had the very important verb, habere. And habere is where the modern day Italian avere, French avoir, Portuguese aver, and Spanish haber come from. Unlike in many of these Romance languages, I understand not all of them, but some of them, Habere in Latin didn't simply just mean to be. Habere in Latin meant something more like to hold or to have. A little bit like French and Italian have conserved it semantically. Now, in the period that pretty much corresponds with the decline of the Roman Empire in the West and the beginning of the Middle Ages, Latin speakers started adopting a new mode of expressing the future. Latin already had future tenses, but for reasons that are not entirely clear to me, and perhaps some of you could answer in the comments, Latin speakers started adopting a more metaphorical means of expressing the proximate future. Kind of like how in Spanish, I might say, I will speak in the indefinite future as hablaré, but if I were to talk about something in the more proximate future, I would say, voy a hablar, I'm going to speak. And what these Latin speakers did was they would take the infinitive of the principal verb, the verb being performed, and they would add a conjugation of habere to the end. And it kind of makes sense. If you have something on you, you have something in your position, you have something in your hands, the implication is that you're going to do something with it soon. Metaphorically, if you have the idea of cooking in your mind, it's implicit that you are going to cook soon. So the way that this would kind of become a future tense kind of makes sense conceptually, metaphorically. But what interests us here is the consequence of this syntactic and metaphorical shift in late Latin. You see, what that means is that every single future tense in the Romance languages today follows the same mode. Let's take hablar in Spanish, for example. If I want to form the future tense, I take the infinitive, hablar, and I conjugate the verb haber, the present tense first person singular indicative of haber is e, and I just add that to hablar, hablar e, and continue to do that for all the others. Hablar tu, as, becomes hablarás. Hablar el, or ella a, becomes hablar a, and so on and so forth. If we remember that h is silent, and so therefore is orthographically redundant, then it's pretty easy to see how hablar evolved this way. And it's not just Spanish that does this. As I said, French, Italian and Portuguese at very least also do. And I would assume that all the other Romance languages follow exactly the same model. In French, if I want to say that I will speak, it's je parlerai. Je and parler combine to make je parlerai. And what's even more interesting is that this model applies also for the conditional. The conditional follows the same kind of idea. Take the infinitive, add the conditional form of haber in whatever language you're speaking, and you're sorted. So, 
I hope that that was interesting to you. I'm going to finish off by saying that behind me is the famous Portello uh, on the eastern side of the city of Padua, which has an inscription dedicated to the mythical founder of the city, Antinor. Um, that's the reason I'm putting up with such bad lighting, and I hope you will too. For now, I'll thank, I will say thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Valete omnes. Thank you.